the coconut palm characterizes our beautiful landscape, in particular our sandy coastline, with its sunburst pattern of branches. In this aspect, the coconut palm is an icon of island life for visiting tourists. Coconut branches provide soothing shelter from the tropical sun. Many popular dishes, desserts and drinks are enhanced by coconut's distinctive flavoring. And there is nothing more refreshing than coconut water, drank directly from a young green nut. But did you know that apart from its easygoing reputation, coconuts have even more uses? It is said that every part of the coconut is of some use and benefit to us. In this episode of Science for All, we shall examine the many uses of the seed from Poco Cerebo Guna, the tree of a thousand uses. Coconuts are associated with easy island living and good eating, but they have played a significant part in our island's agricultural history. There is no single explanation for how coconuts began growing in Trinidad, but one theory uses a coconut's traveling ability as a drift seed. Since landing upon our shores, the coconut, Cocos nocifera, has been put to many uses. The Cocal was the first home of the Trinidadian coconut plantation. However, it was only a matter of time before plantations spread to other parts of the island and Tobago. One of these coconut plantations is the St. Andrew Estate in Cedros on the southwestern tip of Trinidad. The St. Andrew Estate has been part of the Agostini family for the past 140 years. During this time, the plantation has had a significant part of the life and agricultural landscape of Cedros. Uh, coconuts really started uh, in Trinidad on the east coast, in the Mayaro area, and developed here, you could say, from the 1870s um, onwards. Uh, and it turned out to be a far more profitable crop than what was grown here previously, that's to say, uh, cotton or sugarcane and um, for quite a few years was an extremely profitable crop, um, both in the larger states and there were many small proprietors right through, I mean, right through the area. Until uh, you could say the 1970s, uh, it was by far the biggest employer in the area, and now it is less so. But, uh, still employs, I mean in the Cedrosi Caucus area, still employs uh, quite a few hundred people. The Coconut Estate has played a huge community role as job provider, offering a variety of jobs ranging in skills. But what was all this work in the plantation for? Big business, of course. Before the general agricultural downturn of the 1970s, coconut and copra was a major crop in Trinidad and Tobago. Well, coconuts had its own usefulness in the sense that I told you it was good for coconut oil and mattresses and the like. It was not an export crop from the point of view of cocoa, which was king once, and sugar, which is also king. The most we had about 50,000 acres of coconuts. And at that stage, we were able to supply ourselves with most of the coconut oil. And by that time, we had stopped making a lot of coconut brooms and coconut mattresses so that um, the fiber aspect of it had disappeared from the point of view of economics and only coconut oil was being utilized. By that time you had the, the CGA factory developed in 1930 something I think it was and so you had this processing. There were other small factories present down at Cedrus and the Carcass and the like but the major factory was present eventually up at Laventil area there where we have the CGA and so on going on now. Shortly after it was formed in 1936 CGA Limited introduced an industrialized copra processing facility to Trinidad and Tobago. In the following years, the company produced a range of edible and inedible products. All of these products have a main ingredient in common, copra or dried coconut meat. At CGA Limited, copra is processed into crude oil, 
which in turn is used to make refined oils, soaps and margarines. Well, essentially, coconut is processed into copra at the plantations or estates before its arrival at CJ Limited. Here, we take it from that stage of copra. The copra itself is essentially crushed or flaked into tiny particles, which in turn are cooked um, in cookers at about 115 degrees C till the moisture of that copra goes from about 8% down to 3%. Following that, the oil is passed through our expellers or mechanical extractors, and there the oil after elimination or extraction is then sent to the area where it, the crude oil, as it is then called, is filtered and made ready for either soap manufacture or subsequent margarine or oil processing. And it is this oil that drives CGA limited production. We manufacture here um, oils, refined oils, crude oils for a spe specialized market, margarine manufacture, and also soap production. So those are the key products it's applied or used in. And, and it is really vital in terms of the makeup and composition of each of these areas. Of course, we have an, an excellent um, export market with our coconut oils, which are used very much in the Caribbean. Um, in terms of margarine manufacture, it, it is a superb um, additive to many of our products because it enhances baking performance as well as taste of the finished product. In soap manufacture, it adds to the lathering quality of the soap, enhances lathering quality, and also conducive to providing harder soaps that would serve the consumers better. But that's not all. The coconut is important to CGA Limited as a main ingredient, but did you know that coconut may be equally important to your health? Studies coming out of the anti-tropical oils campaign in the late 1980s are showing this to be likely. Well, that's a big argument. In a sense, first of all, coconut oil does not contain any cholesterol. That's the very first thing. And if you look at the journals, there was a time when the American soybean people were going against coconuts. And they had big articles saying coconuts will give you, um, um, give you cancer, not cancer, give you a lot of strokes and the like because of the cholesterol present in it. Since the late 1980s anti-tropical oils campaign, the coconut has been the continued subject of research and published findings in various areas of medicine. These findings are bringing explanations in Western medicine to why the coconut was important for centuries in traditional Indian and also South Asian culture. It may also have unlocked coconut's secret to good living. Now, coconut oil belongs to a very unique group of oils called lauric oils in that its predominant fatty acid is lauric acid which has many virtues. Apart from that, there's some protein that is present in that coconut meat. So that the protein and the lauric acid component is sometimes utilized as a substitute in baby feeds. In the Philippines in particular, a lot of it has been done, um, especially the coconut cream, which contains lauric acid in it. While technological advances have been made since the early days of the coconut plantation, Coconut farming remains a very labor-intensive enterprise. Technology has, however, provided a few important labor aids that modernize coconut farming and oil production. Despite the renewed demand for coconut products, Trinidad and Tobago's coconut industry is far removed from its high production days. From the 1970s, emerging industries and devastating diseases began taking its toll on the local industry. By the late 1980s, health concerns caused by the anti-tropical oils campaign added to the decreasing coconut industry. Many of the smaller coconut farms either merged with other plantations or died out. But what of the remaining plantations? Is there hope for the future? The coconut palm, icon of island life for visiting tourists.
Perhaps this association makes it easy to underestimate just how useful this tree and nut is. Compared to the top coconut producing countries of the world, Trinidad and Tobago's use of the tree of a thousand uses is mainly restricted to the nut. But other parts of the tree have tremendous use. From trunk to branch to leaves, there is no denying that the coconut is anything less than amazing.